Uh, I don't find that surprising. I would say that that number is expected. That does not surprise me at all. That, that number sounds about right with, with what I've experienced and, and kind of the different labs that I've been in. About 30% is, is, is the female ratio that I've seen. Um, my name is Laura Meyer. I am currently a senior and I am a biomedical science major here at McMurray. My name is Shauna Fawcett. I am a senior and my major is biomedical science. I'm Cameron Jackson. I'm a senior and I'm a biomedical science major. My name is Dr. Melanie O'Connell. I am an assistant professor in the departments of biology and human health science. Our research is breast cancer and I have a place in my heart for uh, breast cancer. It's uh, something that decimates most, a lot of women will encounter and um, my mother had breast cancer and so it's not something that I necessarily seeked out but it's something I found a lot of meaning in and I'm pretty happy about that. So right now I am working with um, human skeletal muscle cells. I have grown them and done cell culture. My senior year, Dr. Boyle and Dr. O'Connell got together and they created a combined project for me that works with crabs and studying their molecular pathways, which crosses into my major a little bit more of biomedical sciences. Our area of research, so my research team, looks at a couple different things, but the main area of research that we focus on is we look at collagen's role in breast cancer metastasis. It's definitely not in the past tense. <laughs> I'll put it this way, every day I wake up and I feel like I'm an imposter. Uh, and it's not, I don't know if that has to do with me being a, a woman, particularly here, especially at McMurray, but it's like, some days I wake up and I'm like, how have I convinced people I'm smart enough or I actually know what I'm talking about? But then when people ask me questions, I can answer them and, and, and that's just amazing. But what I do to kind of reaffirm, uh, reaffirm that I'm in the right place is say, hey, you know, if I, if I couldn't do this, um, I wouldn't have the results I have. And you kind of find a community. There's lots of things that factor into your self-doubt. And I know there's a lot of stigma of girls not being able to go into the science field because it's so male dominated, dominated. But also, there's a lot of stuff between the girls too. Like girls just have to support each other. And that's how I made it out, is having my girlfriends to lean on and like, Tell me like, no, you can do it. What do you, why, why would you think that you can't do it? I doubt my abilities every day. Um, you know, there's times when I walk into this office and this lab and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing up here. Um, but then you figure it out every day. You figure it out and you, you know, you look back and you're like, I can do this. I, I, I am, I'm not, I just can't do this. I'm really good at this. And so I think that having those moments as young scientists, like most of our females are at this point in their career, um, those are really important moments because there's going to be times when you fail. I fail daily, but when you get back up and you kind of tackle each of those failures, you're becoming a stronger scientist and you're becoming a stronger researcher. And so that's just part of the process. I think right now the thing about sexism isn't necessarily that it is overt but that it's a subconscious type thing that we have in our society that we're taught culturally, um, you know, societally speaking, that women have specific roles and things like that. And so I only get frustrated when people refuse to be self-critical, be like, hey, yeah, yeah, that was kind of a rude thing or, you know, I didn't mean it to come across that way. It's, we're all learning. And so realistically, it's not about always not being sexist, but being able to um, acknowledge the fact that you can still be a good person and still change, and yet still have um, sexist ideas subconsciously. Specifically at McMurray, no. Um, everyone here does a really good job, professor-wise, um, of encouraging the students to pursue what they want and to do a good job of that. Um, I've had girls ask me, are you smart? And like, what kind of question is that? Who would ask you that, you know? I just sat back and was like, what do you mean, in what way? Am I smart? And they said, well, you just seem really ditzy. And that's not like something that girls should have to struggle with, I think, is being ditzy or smart or fun or boring. It should be a good combination of both, and there's not a lot of that in the science world. And that's what I struggle with a lot, is trying to balance my personality with what is expected of a scientist. In terms of how I do my job, I don't think so. I, you know, 
I think I naturally am able to kind of overcome some of those stigmas that, that come along with being a woman. That doesn't mean that I haven't had challenges that are unique to with being a woman. I, I can remember being called in my PI's office and um, her asking me if I was pregnant because I'd put on weight and that's just not something that you ask a man like a man doesn't have to deal with those kind of questions but as a woman I had you know I was being questioned whether or not I'd be able to do my job and do my training and so you know I've definitely had those kind of those kind of situations come up throughout my career um, but as far as doing my job I 100% feel like I am capable as a woman and McMurray kind of empowers that capability. Probably. I mean, just being a woman, getting the honor to bear a child or have a family, uh, maternity leave, like those types of things that men don't really have to worry about. Um, they still get to continue their, their job, their career, even if their wife is pregnant. So just kind of like the, those things that people don't really think about. In the future, I think that the biggest struggle for me is going to be deciding what's more important for me, a family or a successful career. Because as women, if you want to be a doctor, you're going to have to make some tough choices. Do I want to start my family as soon as I get out of school? I mean, that's going to be, well, I'm going to be about 30 years old and that's going to be the time to start my family. But that's also when my career takes off. And I've been struggling with that for the last couple years as life's gotten more serious, trying to decide what's really important and what life really is about. Honestly, that, that's probably been one of the hardest parts of navigating higher ed is, is knowing when to make those life choices and having those life choices not affect your career, your training, or whatever it is that, you know, whatever direction you're taking. Um, I don't have great life advice. This is something that comes up every time we were in a symposium with a female researcher or a female scientist. The same questions are asked. How do you do this? How do you make it work? Um, and I don't think there is a good answer. I think you kind of, you, you pave your own road as you go. I know for me, that's, that's very much what I had to do. I had to pave my own road and I had to make my career and my family work at the same time. And I think I've been able to do that, but it's, it's very much a unique road that I traveled um, and not a traditional path and so um, there I don't think there is a good answer and that's a really hard thing for young um, young women in science and young women in education it's just there's not there's not an easy way to go about it um, you just figure it out as you go and, and it is possible it's definitely possible to have that family and to you know strike that life work balance there's no easy answer um, it's a really it's a really tough thing for our young ladies to navigate And I do work with in, at McMurray in, in the science department and the professors, uh, especially you know, Dr. Pienta, Dr. Dene, you know, Dr. Veltkamp, Dr. Shin, you know, Dr. Wilson. I mean, all of them have always uplifted women and never put us down. And I am so grateful for that. Whenever Dr. O'Connell stepped in and I got better relationships with Dr. Boyle and understanding my status here on campus and like what I had the options to do and like the availabilities to me on campus, I was able to discover what I really wanted to do with my life and what I wanted to do with research and how it could benefit me and others. And so McMurray kind of does that for you. Uh, it'll open doors where you didn't expect it. Um, well, I initially came to McMurray they had the first softball program, you know, and I was part of that, and it was great. But what really made me come to McMurray was my mom telling me, like, their science department is so good, their sciences are so good, all the doctor's kids go there in town, like, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be in science, you need to go to McMurray. But then whenever I got here, I really understood what my mom was talking about, because I went to class, and the teachers actually cared, you know, and, but really, I mean, I missed class the other day and my teacher reached out and was like, are you okay, you know, and they're really there for you. My professors have um, helped me a lot in figuring out my path and figuring out where I need to go and just figuring out my life, I guess. I think we have, um, we have a lot of support built into our sciences. Um, if you look around our classrooms, we don't, we don't see that 30%. We are typically actually more females to males in terms of our, our science classroom, in terms of our science labs, in terms of research. Um, I think that 
McMurray has built a, um, an environment that really supports our young women and that's a really important thing. Our young ladies do feel empowered and I think that we do a really good job of that. Just the, you know, the support that they get, the, the faculty, the, you know, the opportunities that are afforded to, to everyone on campus makes it, it's, it's a big deal in terms of who we're able to offer that support to and our females really benefit from that. What can we change about it? I mean, I think that the only thing I would say I would change right now, and realistically this is one woman speaking, right, one experience, is the fact that um, I want women to stand up for women. And I think that in, in the field when you hear something or when something, someone says something, being able to be vocal and have people um, hear you instead of trying to um, blame you or uh, you know, sweep it under the rug or something like that, but really just confronting it and trying to make it uh, a more welcoming environment. I guess what would make it more appealing if I was like thinking of my younger self um, is just seeing more women like coming out with like newer breaks in research or medicine. Um, just seeing more news and information in general about women accomplishing things in science because you see tons of things accomplished in science but um, it never really sticks out that a woman's done it or a group of women um, so maybe just like seeing that a woman has done it would probably like encourage me to be able to do it. It's a societal issue more than anything. I think that as females, we're very successful in the scientific field. Uh, we, you know, lots of studies, lots of, you know, big name scientists are females, and and so really, it's it's how do you go about striking a balance between being a female and being a scientist? Um, because there are other societal obligations that you have to take into account. You're the one that has to start the family. You're the one that has to, you know, all of those things you have to think about, um, and so. I think as society continues to shift in the way that they view women and the way that they empower women, um, we're going to see that shift in science also. And so that's a really exciting thing to look forward to. Don't be afraid to be disliked. Don't be afraid to um, speak up. Uh, women are forgotten in history, but we have contributed a lot. Honestly, I would say to take the time and the effort to figure out who you are and what you want to be um, before somebody else can get to you to tell you who to be. Um, that's probably my biggest thing. With the help of others, as long as you're not afraid to ask for help, you can do it. It doesn't matter if you're smart or not, if you think you're capable or not. Um, I understand that backgrounds come into effect, uh, getting brought up different ways, but I mean, as long as you are passionate and you have drive and dedication, it's money. You just got to find the right people to help you uh, get you there. When I was young, I always struggled with asking questions because I felt like everybody was going to think I was dumb or, well, this is probably an easy question that everybody knows, but it really did put me behind because I would be thinking the whole class like, hmm, I wonder what that actually is, you know, and it really distracted me. But. Um, Definitely don't be afraid to ask questions, that's what science is all about. Like I said, there's always going to be more questions than answers and somebody's got to start asking those questions. You just got to go for it. You got to put your mind to it and you got to, you got to commit, you got to be ready to kind of tackle what you're going to be thrown. Um, that doesn't mean it's always an easy road. Um, it definitely comes with its challenges, especially being a female in the scientific world. But um, there's absolutely nothing stopping you at the same time. Um, and so I would encourage any any young female that is interested in, in science to definitely try to pursue it because that's a scientific curiosity that not everybody has and it's such a special thing to kind of um, be able to nurture and, and to, to, to grow with. And so um, go for it, 100%.